Okay, welcome back. And this video is going to cover forms in Mobi Rise. And we have two different options for forms. We have a larger contact form, and then we also have a smaller uh, subscribe form uh, that would go to something like a newsletter or some type of uh, mailing list uh, if you wanted to add that in. You can tell it's uh, quite a bit uh, thinner, not as tall as the full contact form. So let's just jump in and take a look at them. Click on the contact form and it brings you to this. You can see there's a header. We have a field for name, email, phone, and then a message. And then we have a single call to action button. Uh, you've seen contact forms and you filled them out online. These go to an email address and it, it formats these pieces of information that the person puts in there. And you can uh, choose a few different parameters here, not a lot, but we have so that you can show or hide the title. You could put a background image behind it. And this image is a parallax image you can see. And you could also choose an overlay again. So if you wanted to create that effect, or you can merely change the color to maybe a lighter gray. That's something that would set off the boxes a little bit more or a dark color. Maybe a red would really show uh, your contact form. And let's say we wanted to put maybe a white um, header on it and change the color to green and blue. Maybe a little bit more pleasing, I don't know. Or you could also make this, <laughs> you can make that a ghost button as well. So it's not quite, it's there, but it's not quite as prominent. Uh, you have some options for the form fields and all that all I did they're not up here in the block parameters they used to be but they've uh, recently moved them in Mobi Rise so that when you click on a field it doesn't matter what field you click on happens with all of them you can choose to show or hide the name email phone message is just there and when you um, when you highlight this I'll show you uh, this is the text that's meant to be the placeholder inside here. So before it was name with a, an asterisk. And now I'm going to type in full name and you'll be able to see it. Let's get rid of the phone. And this is where uh, your options for the form itself are. There's a notification email or there's an action URL. So this is going to be the email where people are going to send, uh, where it's going to come to you. So if this is a contact form that you want to go to a certain manager or you want to go to yourself, then you would put in a specific email address. It's going to tell you until you, until you put in a valid email address, it'll give you this uh, error message. So now it's checked it. There's an at symbol. There's a dot com. So it's a valid email address. And then once uh, once the message is sent, you can add a little extra, I don't know, a success message, letting the person know the email was sent successfully. Good job. We'll get back to you soon. So let's put that in there. So <clears throat> thanks for filling out our form. Your message was successfully sent. We will get back to you ASAP. And in the meantime, be sure to check out our blog. So you can um, you can actually put any kind of message in there that you want. I don't believe that you can put HTML, uh, but you could certainly try that. Um, you would click OK, and it will save the changes. You can see we've changed the internal name to full name. We only have the email, then we have a message. So we see that, uh, let's test it on the front end. 
So here's our contact form. We can type in our name. <clears throat> and some message goes here. And then when I click the contact us, it will send that message to the email that I'd already provided. And it says, thanks for filling out um, the form. I misspelled that. Your message was successfully sent, and this is the message that we uh, had sent before. So this is this means it was successful, and if it weren't successful, it would give you a form validation error, just like we did before. So, um, let's test that. Okay, so now it gives you an error. So please include an at in the email address. Somewhere.com is not a valid email address and gives you a red box not letting you know that that's an error. So it does have some form validation, what we call validation inside of it built in. So you don't have to worry about having to add those kinds of things uh, yourself, which is also a, a great help uh, in creating some of these interactive elements. And uh, again, you can change the button color or you can change the uh, text of the button, uh, whatever you want to do. So this is the contact form. Let's move on to the subscribe form. So they have it set up as like a, a block where you would subscribe to your newsletter, maybe in the flow of the content or at the end of an article or something like that. You want people to subscribe to your newsletter. Here they would enter your email address. You can change that ghost text as well, the text that shows up inside the form. <clears throat> you could just put email address and you would again put the uh, notification email and then again the success uh, email so let's put that in there and then we'll preview that in the browser and we'll see how that works as well so you would input Your email you would click on subscribe and then again you get this uh, green validation uh, message that says that it worked so thanks for filling out our form so very cool a couple of elements that are really easy uh, these are not always difficult elements to add into um, a regular HTML website but it's so easy to make changes to the different parts of this um, that is just a very handy thing to have, especially, you know, when you want to subscribe to a newsletter or something like that. So um, thanks for checking this part out. And we're moving right along. The next one that we're going to look at is this full width map. And uh, there are some parameter options and some different things that you can do with the maps on the page. And we will look at that next. Uh, thanks for watching.